there you will find the joys and concern uh, tablets, pieces of paper so that you can share with us. Um, if you're watching online, you can uh, put that in the comments and write your name and then we'll be brought up also during the opening hymn. Uh, first of all, today is the Valentine's Day party. Lots of good stuff back there I see. So it's going to be a good cake walk, lots of things to uh, auction on and good food. So we hope everybody stays for that. Um, finance committee will meet Monday, outreach on Tuesday, and there will be the prayer group meeting on Wednesday. Uh, reading program at St. Charles Elementary School. Um, I don't, you want to say something about what's up there already? Okay. So uh, take a look at that. Um, tables. We got table, free tables for anybody that wants one. There's eight of them, 32 by 8. They're the wooden kind. There's six of them now. 
Okay. <laughs> it's, it's still going on, Marsh. I still can't see. <laughs> um, and uh, the journey to Jerusalem. Our miles have been added up, and we have went a total of 462 miles. Um, I think when we get to New York, we should uh, probably take a plane, it'll be faster. So keep reading your Bibles, we're making it there. So uh, I think that's all I have, if anybody else has any other announcements. If not, I welcome you to stand if you're able for our call to worship. A gift of a new day. A new day with surprising miracles. Kindness to be shared. A gift of a new day. Let us rejoice it with joy. And let's join together in our opening hymn.
You know, there's something I've been noticing a lot lately. I don't know if you see it too, but there's sure a lot of heart-shaped and love-related items in the stores and everywhere you go. Maybe it has something to do with the whole Valentine's Day thing. But I have to say I'm kind of over it. I mean, look, it's one thing to have these cute little cards and these balloon-shaped things and heart-shaped candies. I mean, there's this stuff everywhere you go, everywhere you look, right? <laughs> and then we've got these little candies in here that have got sayings on them. Who reads these or even eats them? Any of you? <laughs> okay, it's everywhere. Do people realize that this is not the real shape of your heart? Your heart doesn't look like this, does it? It looks kind of ugly. Yeah, it looks like a big fist, kind of, if you think about it, doesn't it? <laughs> so, okay, so this is kind of what's going on right now. And actually, we're going to be celebrating that yet today. It's everywhere, okay? And it's out of control. Don't get me started on the whole mushy. Love is in the air. <laughs> you see it on commercials and posters and you hear it in songs. Not just on Valentine's Day either. It's on the Hallmark Channel year round. So, some of you may not agree with me, but all this love stuff can be a little overwhelming, can it? You think about it? No? You all like this love stuff, don't you? <laughs> love for <laughs> They don't pay attention to it. Okay, there's all different kinds of love that we know. You can, whoops, almost lost it. We have love for our families, we have love for our friends, we have love for our pets, we love sports, and we love our favorite kind of foods. God views love as a very important thing and tells us how we need to love one another. Jesus talked about love whenever he was talking to a group of people and teaching them. He even shared with them some things about love that were a little shocking. He said that if you are fighting with someone, then you need to make peace with them, even before you go to church to worship. You cannot worship God freely with an angry heart. He also said that hating someone was almost as bad as killing them. Wow, that's pretty serious, isn't it? He wants us to have good heart intentions. He wants us to love all of his beloved creatures and all of his creation, and we can't do that if we have any hate in our hearts. It's really hard to be kind to people sometimes, but we can ask God to help us with these feelings. <clears throat> and with his help, anything is possible. So right now, let's bow our heads and ask God to love everyone. Dear God, help us to understand what love means. Help us to practice it with those around us, even when we don't feel like it. You are so amazing. Thank you for the love of Jesus. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I do have I don't have quite enough of everything for everybody. I didn't expect this big of a turn. So let's start with the these younger ones back there, you little ones, come here. Come up here first. You get that. Did you get it with the mommy? <laughs> oh, he's leave him, leave him without. Yeah, come here. You didn't get your treat. <laughs> okay, who's next? You look like maybe you're a little younger. Did you get one already? You did. All right, let me see. I'm close my eyes and hold it out. Who gets it? Okay. Oh, you can only have one. Hey, okay, now. Did you take 
one and pass it around. Take one and pass it to the rest. And who didn't get a box of candy? You didn't get it. Here's some stickers. Did you get a candy? Did you get a candy? Did you get a candy? You got a candy. Would you rather have stickers? Who did? Did everybody else get candy? You didn't. Here, you can have two. I have extra. Extra. Here, you got candy? Okay. Extra stickers for those who get candy. Okay, did everybody get a Valentine's card? Yes. Okay. All right, I guess they are having Sunday school, so Miss Diane is back there, and you can head back that way. But I hope you can bear with me today as far as the uh, correct procedure for uh, joys and concerns and prayer is lifted up. But we have quite a few uh, joys and concerns today. Um, I'm going to do my best to be able to read them all. Uh, we have uh, a name, uh, Judy Averill, uh, said passing is a prayer of concern. It says, please keep all of in your prayers. She's doing better. Here's a, a, a joy, a great uh, sunshine that's out there today. Certainly could be very thankful for that. Another prayer concern, a brother, a brother-in-law's sister, a Karen and Denny, prayers are needed. Uh, and for my niece, Maddie. Another prayer concern, prayers for my friend, looks like Bonnie, having shoulder surgery on Wednesday. Uh, prayer concern for Terry Bailey. Uh, blessing outreach and provide prayer seats and one booster seat. A prayer concern for Gary Green for healing, Pat Collier for healing. Prayer, prayers uh, for God's blessings for the earthquake victims in Turkey and Syria. That's certainly a big issue. I, I don't what the number's up to, but I know it's over. Is it over 20,000? Something like that really a high number. Can you please keep them in your prayers? Hopefully I got all the, all these are all the prayer concerns for today. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Gracious Father, we praise your holy name. We come to you in thanksgiving for this opportunity to bring before you our prayer concerns that were lifted up here this morning. Lord, we know that you hear all prayers and you answer all prayers in your infinite wisdom. You answer them in your way and in your own time. And Lord, we thank you as we pray the prayer your son taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in the temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Today's scripture is called the Great Commission. It's taken from Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, I am with you always, the very end of the age. I've already, my name's already been mentioned, but uh, I am Denny Wissinger, uh, and I'm very pleased to be here with you this morning. I was asked I bought by uh, Pastor Brenda two or three weeks ago if I would be willing to come and, and give a message to, to your church. And, and I'm, like I said, I'm very pleased to do it. And I'm very, this is a beautiful church you have here. Um, just a little bit about me before I get into it. My home church is in Farwell. Uh, if you're not familiar with Farwell, it's, you might have heard of Clare. It's about five miles west of Clare, Michigan. I am retired from the United States Army with 21 years of service. After I retired from the Army, I went to work for the Federal Aviation Administration, where I retired from there. One of several jobs that I currently have is serving as your district lay leader, the Central Bay District. You know, it was laity that started the early church in the first century. It began with Jesus, of course, and with his disciples. They did not start out as what we might consider clergy. They were not priests or part of the Jewish hierarchy of religious leaders. But yet they started the early Christian church, which grew into what it is today. However, somewhere along the line in our early church and tradition, clergy, of course, were appointed. They were given certain rights, privileges, and responsibilities. Clergy really became the enlightened leadership, and lady became what you might call the spectators or the audience, or perhaps you could say the consumers of religion. But really, that's not the way it was ever meant to be. Lady lost sight of their role in ministry. But I would hope, and I would think you would agree with me, that perhaps Lady could take a more active role to accept and celebrate the, and use the gifts of ministry. My talk this morning is going to be divided into three parts. Uh, one is becoming and making disciples, which fits in with today's scripture. Another is Lady within the church, within this church, and Lady serving God. And the third is spiritual growth. Getting back, what is the mission of the United Methodist Church? The United Methodist Church overall, does anybody know? I think I heard. Make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Very good. That's it. Make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Um, some churches adopt that very mission and call it their own church mission. That's what we've done in Farwell. But that, that's what we are commanded to do is to make disciples of Jesus Christ. Who is it that's supposed to make disciples? Is it pastors? Yeah. Is it pastors only? Of course not. It's also a lady supposed to make disciples. It's for all of us to consider ourselves Christians and followers of Jesus Christ who are responsible for making disciples. The uh, scripture that I read this morning from the 28th chapter of Matthew is the most familiar form of what's referred to as the Great Commission. But there's also various forms of the Great Commission in the other three Gospels and also in the, the Book of Acts. So it's obviously very important, or I don't think you'd find it in all the places, all those places. Supposedly the very first words that Jesus spoke that were noted in part of the uh, scripture 
actually verses 18 and 19, was, I've been given all authority in heaven and on earth. This authority was given to him by God the Father. He further went on to say, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You notice the authority was given to, to Jesus' disciples. Just, just as it was given to the disciples so many years ago, it's, it's also given to us today, the command to make disciples. You might have also noticed that there are two action verbs in the scripture. The two action verbs are go and make. Go into the world. Where are we commanded to go? It could be anywhere. It could be in this church. It could be in your home. It could be in school. It could be in your place of business. Your community. That's where you're to go and you're to make. Obviously to make. What are you to make? To make disciples. Anywhere and everywhere that you're, you can do it. The Great Commission says that we're to make disciples. It doesn't say we're to become disciples. Um, what are some ways uh, that we can make, that we can uh, become a disciple? Uh, and what is a disciple? Uh, most often I hear people tell me that a disciple is a follower of Christ. And that's true. But there's more to it than, than just being a follower of Christ. A, a true disciple is more than that. A disciple is one who emulates Christ, is obedient to Christ, models his or her life after Christ, walks in the footsteps of Christ, is, is committed to serving God, Christ, and others. And I'm sure you can come up with others of your own as far as what a disciple is. But what does it take from there to make a disciple? I would say yes, there's no specific instructions on how to go about making disciples. Uh, no, no two people think the same or would approach the task the same way. And by the way, when Jesus gave that command, it was not a suggestion, it was, it was a command as, as indicated. That means to us also. Some of the ways that we can make disciples is share the good news of uh, Jesus Christ, share the good news of what Jesus Christ did for the world, what he did for you, what he did for us, what he did for others. Um, one thing that I've learned over the years, when it comes to making disciples, don't ever preach at people. Share the good news with people, share your own story with people on how you came to know Christ. That way it seems more often than not people tend to be more receptive. But last thing you want to do is ever preach at them or talk down to them. Another thing you could do is share your own affirmation of faith uh, with the person you're addressing. Uh, a good example of uh, affirming your faith is found in the uh, Apostles' Creed. You can find it in number 882 or 881 of your own Methodist Temple. Some of you may have it memorized. Some churches do it often. Uh, our church doesn't. Maybe once, we're up down to about once every six months. Uh, one of the things though about the Apostles' Creed, one of the things about making disciples is that that's telling the story as to what you believe what is much, much more, what is equally important, if not more important, is the fact that you need to put that, and stress putting that belief into action, putting it into use, not just talking about it. Another thing we can do is put our spiritual gifts into, it, into action. Just one side note here, uh, you may have heard this before, but God has given each and every one of us at least one spiritual gift. Um, you may know what your spiritual gift or gifts might be, or you might not. There's ways of finding out, there's courses that can be taken, there's Bible studies that can be taken. But some examples of spiritual gifts, things like preaching, teaching, leadership, administration, healing, giving, hospitality, serving, helping, that's just that's just a handful of the many different spiritual gifts. 
with all of us having these different spiritual gifts and thankfully we don't all have the same spiritual gifts but if you put them all together that's what makes up the body of Christ the body of Christ to serve God the body of Christ to serve this church the second area I'd like to address is the topic of roles of laity in the church like I said earlier uh, laity are not to be spectators or consumers of religion another thing we need to remember is our pastor is only one person and we are many it's up to us to step up take the initiative, be innovative and be able to uh, support the church be able to help the pastor accomplish the mission of leading the church two groups that get involved with an initiative and innovation I call them chiefs and Indians but I'm sure that's not politically correct anymore so we call them um, how about we call them uh, uh, leaders and followers we need both uh, some members of the church make really good leaders other ones really make effective followers within the church and some of the areas that come to mind in serving the church and I did some questioning and I found out that this is a very active church which is really commendable but um, well, some of the ways to do it is become very involved in voluntary to be active in different phases, different things within the church, such as serving on uh, committees or teams, uh, serving on the administrative council or, or some of the other committees such as finance or SPRC or uh, worship committee, any of the other. Uh, could also be the women's group used to be United Methodist Women, I think it's now Women in Faith, they've changed the name of it, could be a men's group, uh, Bible study in Sunday school classes, uh, getting people to sign up to be liturgists, and I know this church has a number of liturgists and ushers, getting people to sign up for coffee hours. Another way uh, comes to mind, which I found a lot of churches that I visited do not have what I call prayer groups. I was really pleased to hear that this church does have a prayer group that meets on Wednesday. That's commendable. I, I say more than half the churches I visited do not have any kind of a prayer group. So, I thank you for that. Another thing, uh, look for ways to perhaps serve uh, additionally in outreach programs. Look for ways to support uh, your pastor, one of the things that our district superintendent, Reverend John Casper, suggested that I mentioned is that uh, some of the churches, especially uh, perhaps a bigger church like this one, it's always helpful to have uh, a visitation team, somebody to support the pastor and be able to go out uh, to nursing homes and hospitals, assisted living, those who are shut in and represent the pastor and pay visits to them. And I don't know what exactly what this church does, but perhaps you're already doing that. And that's commendable if you are. Getting back to making disciples, you might say to yourself, as I once did, I'm not really equipped to go and make disciples. With regard to being equipped, you may, may have heard the expression, that God does not call the equipped, but rather equips the called. That gets us to the third area that I would like to share with you that includes ways that you can become better equipped to fulfill the Great Commission and grow spiritually and to better serve God and strengthen your support of this church. Ways of doing that is deliberately study scripture, learn from uh, the pastor's sermons, participate in Sunday school. If, if you have an adult Sunday school, I don't know if you do. Uh, participate in Bible study, read devotion books such as The Upper Room or Guideposts, and there's many, many different uh, sources of information as far as uh, reading devotion books. Have a structured time of prayer and meditation. Attend spiritual retreats. Uh, my favorite, and it might be your favorite, is a walk to Emmaus. 
It's a tremendous spiritual retreat. It was really a life changer for me, at least, uh, the three-day experience. Another way you can grow spiritually is by taking what's called lay servant ministry courses. You might ask yourself, is God calling me? Is God calling you to discover your spiritual gifts? To lead in worship? To give a sermon? To lead in prayer? To lead Bible study? To increase your knowledge of John Wesley and Methodism? To plan activities for children and youth? To help with congregational care? It goes on and on. There's many, many different courses available. This, this can be accomplished by taking any of the number of many, many courses that are available. If you need more information about lay servant ministry courses, you can contact me, you can contact the district, the district website, or even the Michigan Annual Conference website uh, to take advantage of upcoming lay ministry courses that are coming up. There are different levels. There's the lay servant, there's a certified lay servant, excuse me, there's also a certified lay speakers, which is a level higher where you have to have more courses. Then you get into certified lay ministers, which would get you into a step of actually getting into, into actually becoming a pastor. Having covered the three areas, there's just a few things I'd like to say as far as a wrap up this morning. So we did look at three areas. We looked at making disciples, we looked at serving, looked at growing, all of which you should consider important as far as being part of the role of lady. What I'd like to do is just share a few parting thoughts. If we as Christians are to stay alive in our spiritual journey, we must breathe in and breathe out. Why is he saying breathe in and breathe out? First of all, we can't do just one, can we? We have to breathe in and we have to breathe out. We can't do one without doing the other. But obviously, if we did not breathe in and out, we would die from lack of oxygen. But what are we to breathe in? We're supposed to breathe in, we should breathe in, all that God's Word or Scripture has to offer us and what God's people have to offer it to us. And what are we supposed to do with everything we breathe in? We breathe it out. We breathe it out to others in serving God and serving this church, serving God's people. So breathe in all you can, breathe out all you can to serve. Another thing in thinking about the Great Commission, I had to ask myself, what would happen if we as Christians never took the Great Commission seriously? What if we never thought that we should be making disciples? What if none of us made disciples? What would happen to Christianity? Something to consider. Final thought, recognizing each of us is different. Each of us is different in our spiritual journey. There's some of us that might still be sitting in the grandstands. Yeah, I said grandstands. We're still sitting in the grandstands and are there some of us that need to be getting out of the grandstands and onto the playing field? Could we take on more, more active lady roles? I thought about that. I know that I could. I, there's still more that I could be doing. Maybe you could think of some on your own. More that you could be doing as far as taking on lady role. One thing I did learn after communicating with Pastor Brenda, it's obvious that the they in this church are very active. That's commendable. And you should be very proud of that. What I'd like to do now, let us, let us pray. Pray me, gracious Father. We pray that you open our ears, our minds, our hearts, and our lips in being parts of the body of Christ and servants to you and to others as we continue to walk with you in our spiritual journey and to carry out our responsibilities to make disciples. In your holy, precious name, we pray. Amen.
And if you would please, at this point, stand with me for closing him. Here I am, Lord, number 593, if you're using the hymnal. I think the words are probably on the screen. Or I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. We have tithes and offerings. <laughs> sorry about that. I need some training. If the ushers would please come forward.